Hello everyone. Today we'll learn about the stacks implementation in Java. Uh, I'll also be providing the uh, code in C++ and Python uh, for those who are coding in Python and C++. Uh, uh, just remember that this video is the second part of a stacks uh, theory that I made uh, and I have uploaded it uh, previous month so go through that video first if you do not know what stacks are if you know what uh, LIFO system is and how LIFO works and how we implement stack the theory of the stack then we can get into the implementation the actual coding of a stack now in this video I'll be starting from the coding part only I'll not be explaining anything so please go through that video uh, which, I, which is uploaded in Hel Helm of Science channel uh, go through that video to understand the basics and then come to the coding part so let's start with the coding part the first thing that i uh, want to do is i need to create a file now go uh, to visual studio i'm using visual studio you can you can use any editor of your choice you just have to create a file and name it stack dot java you can name it anything but it's good to go with stack now uh inside this file i'm going to create a class uh, and i'll be naming that class the same as the file name which is uh stat uh which is stack just a minute yeah so i've created a class which is a public class because we want to uh, want to be able to use uh this stack class in all other classes uh, where, wherever we need to uh import it so just get this and uh, within this the first thing that i want to do is i want to declare some variables so let's let's write down what are the things that we need to do so i'll use commenting and this is how we comment one line comments uh i'll declare variables okay so the first thing is I'll declare variables. Now, if you have watched the previous video, I've talked about how we use an, an array, a top variable, uh, and we'll also need the length of the array, so the length of the stack. So these things will be in variables. So this is where we will declare variables. Then we will be writing the constructor. The constructor so the constructor is very important because it will initialize the stack and make the array of the size that you provided and then set the top to zero uh, and this is all that constructor will do so this is very important next is uh, we need to create the push method then we need a pop method and then uh we need a peak method and uh, then we have a display method now if you have watched the last video on stacks theory you know all the all the methods that i have written here the push method is basically how you put in uh, a value in the stack pop method is how you remove something from the stack Peak is uh, the the topmost element of the stack, and display is basically which displays the stack from top to bottom. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I need to uh, uh, clear some things out. The first thing that I need to clear out is in many schools, I've seen the top variable is set to minus one in case of an empty stack. Now, if your school teaches you that it is minus one, then also it is correct. None of these methods either use top as zero if empty or use minus one if empty. Both of these ways are correct. You just need to think about when you increment or decrement the top during pushing or popping from the from the stack uh, this we will uh, discuss when we will write the code to push and pop uh, but now you just have to remember that neither of the the theory is wrong so 
do not say that your school is teaching you wrong or i am teaching you wrong both of these methods apply correctly but if your school teaches minus one follow that minus one rule uh if your school says that when the stack is empty we set top to zero then listen to that and i'll be telling you how to change your code so that it matches now the first thing is to declare the variables now we have uh, found out that there it we need three variables the first variable is the length of the stack so i'll name it n you can name it length so i'll just name it length then. length means the length of the stack then we need to create an array which is basically the stack and then we need to create an a top thing so these are the three variables that we will require in making the stack then we'll make the constructor the first thing in the constructor is we'll make it public public stack so constructor doesn't have any return type as you all know but this stack will have a parameter because when we are creating a stack we need to pass a length of of the of the stack into the constructor because the array needs to be initialized with the length if you know what arrays are in java you know that arrays need to be initialized first with a size and so that size needs to be passed so the first thing that we pass is an int n and we need not pass anything uh, except n now inside the constructor will set len to n then we'll set array to a new int array we are we are making an int stack so we are making an integer stack if you want to create a string stack just change this and this so uh, inside this uh, we'll give the length then we want the top to be zero now if your school says that it needs to be minus one write minus one after the constructor we will go and write the push method but in the push method we have uh, we have shown that the push method requires a value it puts in the value inside the array at the top position and uh, then increments the top variable but we need to uh, think about a situation when the top is equal to the length of the array at that point if we want to enter something it will show index out of bounds which is array index out of bounds error and that error occurs because we cannot enter a value at a position which is outside the array and as arrays have 0 to n minus 1 indexing if the the top is equal to len then actually the top is outside the array and it, whenever we will uh, try to get something into the array at that position it will show you an error so for that we need to give a check so we need to uh, make an if condition which checks if the top is equal to len and if it is then it will not enter the value and it will show some error message now let's start by writing the uh, method we'll make a void method because push does not return anything it will take a value and then uh, inside this I'm going to give a condition now the first thing that we need to do is make a condition because if uh, we do not do that first then uh, probably you'll get some error because the top is outside the array now so the first thing that we need to do is we need to write if top is equal to length many of you might write greater than equal to that is also also correct but probably you will never reach a point when it's greater than the length because whenever it's equal to the length we will not increment it and if it is 
not equal to the length that means it is less than the length and we if we are not incrementing it after it is equal to length uh, then we'll never reach a point when top is greater than length so uh, giving greater than equals length is the same as equals length but for surety we can give greater than equals length so let's uh, say if top is greater than or equal to length that means it is outside the array so that means that the whole array is filled completely so the stack is completely filled now that is called a stack overflow so we'll just write stack overflow these are two concepts stack overflow and stack underflow these are two concepts which mean that the stack is either full which means overflow and if it is uh, completely empty, it is underflow. So if it is a stack overflow, we just need to return from here. And uh, for those who don't know, this return statement does not have any value, which means it returns the control to the calling uh, function. Uh, that means if, if, if it is a void method that you're returning from, uh, just try to return and it will go out of that method back to where it was called from uh, and after that some people like to give else but here there is no need because either you're returning from the method so you will not execute the rest of the lines or you'll get to these lines uh, so the first thing that you need to do is we need to set the uh, top position in the array to the value and then the top needs to be incremented that's it and then we can uh we can uh, give uh some uh, message which says uh that the value has been pushed into the into the stack and that's it so the push method is done so let's go through the push method once if the top is greater than or equal to the len then it is a stack overflow and it will return from this method it will not execute any more lines if it has not returned then it will go to the next line which is ar uh, array top is equal to value which means it's setting the top position in the array to the value and then we are incrementing the top so that we increase the number of uh, elements in the stack then we are going to the next line and printing that the value has actually been pushed if there is any error before this line then it will show in our terminal and we'll know that the value has not successfully entered okay so the next method here is the pop method now the pop method is uh, a little bit more tricky because it returns something now uh, it is public int pop that we need to uh, make why is it an int method why is it returning an int because it returns the topmost element and decrements the top as we have explained in the previous video uh, so the first thing that we need to check here also is that if the stack is completely empty we need not uh, uh, remove anything because we cannot remove anything there is no element in the stack if the stack is completely empty the pop operation does not work and here we need to print stack underflow in that case so we'll say that if top is less than or equal to zero then the system dot out dot print len stack under So this means that the stack has underflowed. Now we need to return something. 
uh, we'll return minus 999. Now here we are just gambling that this number will not be entered by the user. But if this number is entered by the user, then there will be a problem. In that case, I will uh, tell you to return some number which you know that the uh, user is not going to enter. Uh, you can uh, give null, but it might give some errors so i'll i'll be giving minus 999 uh, which is an abrupt number and probably no one will enter this number uh, in in the stack so uh, i'll give minus 999 which is my error code uh, which means that uh, if the pop returns minus 999 that means that the stack has underflowed and it has not removed anything it cannot remove anything so next is if it has not returned nine minus nine 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 which is if the if condition does not uh, uh is not true then we'll just decrement top minus minus that's it so we'll just decrement the top and return whatever is at the top now Remember that I said that the, uh, the element below the top or uh, one step behind the top is the last element in the, in the, in the stack. Uh, that's why you are decrementing first and then returning the element which is there. That means that element has been removed. Now I need to clear some things out. If you're using top minus one, like here then you need to make these changes you need to write top is greater than or equal to len minus one you need to write the top plus plus first and then the uh, putting the value in in the push method you need to write top is less than zero in this condition and array top minus minus this is basically a, a way to tell that now the top is the same as it was before but after this line after this operation it will decrement that means first we return at the array at position top and then decrement it okay now you might ask that return uh, will stop the method from working the top will not decrement anymore that's not the case it happens this way you can also write intk is equal to arr uh, top then top minus minus and then we're going to return k this is also how you can write this so uh these are the changes that you need to make if you're using top minus one the peak method i'll talk about after this so let's continue with our uh coding we'll do the top equals zero and all we have uh, reverted all the changes because uh, that uh we are not following the top equals minus rule now next is the peak method so the peak method is uh, very similar to the pop method in uh, the sense that it just does not decrement the top it just returns the array top uh, array uh, element at the top position but it does not decrement it before it just writes top minus one here i'll show so the first condition is the same if the stack is underflowed then the peak method will also give the same output if it is not underflowed then we'll just return array top minus one now there is a difference between top minus minus and top minus one top minus one will just give the value of top decremented by one 
it will not decrement that variable but it will just take the value of that and put it into the array index but top minus minus what it does is it changes the value of the top variable only it will it it will give that value but it will change the top variable also in this case we do not want to change the top variable because peak just shows the last element it does not remove it so that's what we need to do this is how the peak will work and in the case of peak if you're using top equals minus one at start then the same thing that you did with pop is what you need to do with peak just the one difference is uh, the the if condition will change to uh, less than zero as we have done for the pop and this will change to this so there will be no minus one uh, if the top was minus one at, at the start okay so we'll revert those changes we'll set all the changes to normal and then we'll go to the display method now uh let's write the display method public void display again the display does not uh return anything so we're just printing some things so it will just be void so we'll start a for loop always when we are printing something we need we like to use for loops it will start from the top minus one in this case if you're using top my uh, top equals minus one at the beginning then just write top here that will work but we are using zero so we'll write top minus one i is less than equal to uh sorry greater than equal to zero i plus plus and within this for loop i'm just going to uh, system dot out dot print and in this case we're just printing uh numbers side by side so we need not write print ln uh inside here we're just gonna give a space and then the array index array value at index i and then add a space at the end also okay this is our display method uh sorry i made a small mistake it needs to be minus minus if you write i plus plus it will be an infinite loop you do not want that so uh we need to write i minus minus so we're decrementing i from the top to zero okay so the display method is done and ready now we'll write the main method every a uh, program that you like write in java needs to be run from the main method so we need to write the main method the main method is uh, so i'll use the main i'll use the main method stub here yeah uh, you need to write the whole thing this is a uh, visual studio code this is great so i i have the uh, uh, the choice of using this the you know pre made stub code stuff now in this main method i'm just going to create an object of the stack so we'll create an object of the stack just how we create objects of anything in java we need to create an object ob equals a new stack and remember that the stack uh, constructor takes a parameter now that parameter is the length of the stack so in this case we need to think of what the length must must be if you have a question that requires a certain length of a stack pass that length but for testing purposes give a small length because we are not going to uh, put hundreds of things in a stack and then check give uh, five as a length that will do now now we need to make sure that it runs perfectly we need to push things into the stack so you can try to pop something from the stack that will just give a uh, stack underflow so uh, just write ob.pop and we expect stack underflow right 
because there is nothing in the stack we, we are popping something so it needs to uh, say stack underflow let's run this yeah so it says stack underflow and if you take a value int val equals uh, ob dot pop if you take that value and then you print that uh here val and then you run it again uh you'll see that there is stack underflow and then there is minus 999 which we uh, designated here as in an error code which passes only if the stack is un uh, is completely empty so uh, this works fine now but we do not want to pop at first we just need to uh, write ob dot push now let's push 10 first and then uh, ob dot display so we are pushing 10 and then displaying that should display 10 right let's run so here the first thing that it does is it goes to the push method it pushes 10 and it says that 10 has been pushed I misspelled pushed here, but whatever. And then ob.display displays the whole stack, which has only 10, and the 10 displays here. Okay. Now, uh, let's uh, put some more things in here. Just a minute. Uh, uh, how did you do that? Yep. Mm. yeah so let's put five things in this so the length is five that means we can enter five things in it and then we'll also push a sixth element and in uh, when we are entering the sixth element basically it must give stack overflow right so let's run it that's it so first 10 is pushed then 20 then 30 then 40 then 50 and then when it wants to enter 60 it gives a stack overflow and then after that we are displaying the whole stack so it displays 50 40 30 20 and 10 in order okay so let's uh, after pushing uh, up, up to 60 let's pop something and then see what the display gives us so at this point the stack has till 50 right because the 60 does not enter we can just uh, comment this out because we know that it works the stack overflow thing so up till now we have uh, 50 uh, uh, as the last element if we pop now that will mean that now the last element is 40 and the 50 is not in our stack so let's see if that works let's run there is some error oh i did not give a semicolon that's a stupid error let's run it again yeah so now after running we see that uh, we have pushed 10 then 20 then 30 then 40 then 50 and then we also have removed 50 and then we are uh, we are printing 40 30 20 10 that means the 50 has been removed by this pop operation uh, i just missed something uh, here we need to say if you're popping we need to take k as the value which is uh, being popped and just uh, say that k has been popped that's it so now if we run the method uh, yes so here we are entering 10 20 30 40 50 and then 50 has been popped 
then we show 40 30 20 10 that's how it works then uh we need to see if the pop actually reduces the top that means if we are we have five uh, as the length and if we are removing one thing from the stack then we are left with one empty space which we can fill so now if we copy this line and print it here this should not show stack overflow because the 50 has been removed and it can enter in that position now so if we run that yeah so it works you see that we have entered 10 20 30 40 50 and then 50 has been popped then 60 has been pushed into the stack and then out the display shows 60 40 30 20 and 10. you see that the 50 is completely removed from the stack okay guys i made two mistakes in this video the first mistake is that i told you that pop returns minus 999 when uh, there is nothing in the stack but here when we are printing k has been popped i did not take into consideration that when minus 999 has been returned it shows minus 999 has been popped which does not make any sense because first it shows stack underflow because it is here and then it shows that minus 999 has been popped which means nothing actually so let's change this code a little bit so that uh, we check if k is not equal to minus 999 then we are going to print k has been popped otherwise else we are going to uh, print nothing has been popped right that's it that that's uh seems correct now what we can do is we can just um comment these so we do not have anything in the stack now because we've commented these things uh and we will probably also comment these two lines and let's see if this really works now the stack is completely empty we need to see if it actually works so we run yeah so it first shows stack underflow as you can see let me make the terminal bigger yeah so stack underflow as you can see and nothing has been popped because it returns minus 999 but if we just uncomment one of these lines and then run then we see that 10 has been pushed to stack and then 10 has been popped so this is it this is how we make that little change which uh, saves us from any kinds of errors the second mistake that i did was that i did not tell you about the peak method i actually wrote the peak method here but I did not implement it in the main method. So I'm going to do that now. So this was our uh, whole thing. So uh, at this point, let me show you how it works. So 10 has been pushed, 20 has been pushed, 30 has been pushed, uh, 40, 50, and then 50 has been popped, and then 60 has been pushed, and then 60, 40, 30, 20, 10, that, that is how it works. Now, the peak method can come in between any lines. So we can say that int uh, peak, uh, int p, let's say, is equal to peak ob dot peak. Uh, that's it. And then at some point, let's print the p. p is the topmost element type so at this point ob has pushed 10 and then 20 so the topmost is 20 and we expect to see that 20 is the topmost element and then we push 30 40 50 
let's see yeah so it does 10 has been pushed 20 has been pushed and then we peak so it says 20 is the topmost element 10 pushes 30 40 50 and then 50 has been popped 60 has been pushed into stack and then 60 40 30 20 10 the peak works now if we just cut these lines and uh, let's uh, print it here yeah so if we print it here as you can guess we are popping 50 from the stack and so after popping if we peak then we should return 40. Uh, so I'll clear the screen yes. and then we're gonna run. Yeah, so 10 has been pushed, 20 has been pushed, 30 has been pushed, 40 has been pushed, 40, 50 has been pushed and then 50 has been popped. 40 is the topmost element because we peaked after removing 50 and then 60 has been pushed and then the elements. So this is how peak works. Uh, yeah, so let's continue with the rest of the video. This is how the stack works and this is the implementation of the stack in Java. Now I'll also be giving you the implementation of a stack in Python and in C++ which will probably not be the same code that your school teaches you but it will be a working implementation of a stack which you can understand uh, the implementation from. Okay then, so this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching the video. I'll try to make another video on a, a problem which uh, needs to be solved with a stack. So that will be the next video if I am able to come up with a problem like that which is easy for beginners. Uh, I'll, I'll also have to see that the question is not very difficult and it is not completely out of syllabus. So I need to find out a question like that. And if I'm able to, then we'll make a video on that. So thank you for watching. Bye bye.